Wendy, it's so great to see you. That music gets me going. I'm ready to dance. I know, you know? right? You're just like, yeah. <laughs> now, we have a real party today, okay? It's a real party. You're making a very festive holiday dish. Tell us what you're going to make today. Yes, I'm going to make cheesy cauliflower and broccoli casserole today, and it is super tasty. I've tried it out on people who don't necessarily eat this way, and they did like it, so that's, that's also a plus. <laughs> that's, a huge, that's a huge positive sign, okay? And yeah. also... You made a few tweaks, which I love. I already goes one specific tweak, which I'm excited for you to tell people about because being able to modify recipes is a skill that's important. And it's a skill that you as a coach in our coaching program help all of our members learn and understand. And I, I just think it's a really important skill. Yeah. Yeah. So this recipe for the, the, the cheese sauce that goes in it originally and when you see the recipe, it'll say cashews in there. And I like to substitute white beans for mm -hmm. cashews mm -hmm. just because it reduces the fat content for me. And I find really if I if I do more beans, my blood glucose is much more even. Rock solid. I love it. Okay. So I know it, there's a lot of steps involved in this recipe. So I say we go ahead. We get started. All right, let's get going. All right, so I'm gonna turn my camera down just a little bit so you can all see my cutting board here. And Perfect. I'm just gonna do, let me make sure I got this. There we go. You can see I got my recipe set up. I got, I got all the pieces parts. So first thing we need is this butternut squash right here. And I like to go just to Trader Joe's and just get it already chopped up, get it already in these cubes. It just makes life much easier, especially if we're gonna do a holiday recipe. And I'm just going to put it in my pan right here. So first we start with butternut squash. This is going to be for our cheese sauce that we're making. I'm going to chop up some onions now. Um, and it calls for one yellow, like medium yellow onion, but I didn't have any. I had two small onions. So I'm just going to chop these up. And you don't really have to do a whole lot of chopping. You know, you can just make them in big pieces. Like I usually just do quarters here and that's all you need to do for your onion so the prep is really easy you know you're not having to cry while you're chopping your onion <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's nice that's a good benefit <laughs> although remember <laughs> i remember cyrus telling me oh and that's just my i'm already pre-steaming some broccoli so let me get that off of there and then i'll tell you what i was going to tell you so my amount of broccoli and cauliflower is so much that it won't all fit in my steamer. <laughs> so I have to do a little bit of uh, both, but I'm gonna be chopping up the, the more broccoli and cauliflower. So this is our first batch here. So we'll just pour that in our pan. And then I'll let this continue to go. And we'll get it rocking, right? <laughs> Okay, Absolutely. so I got my onions here. So I'm going to also put those just on top of this butternut squash that you see back here. So pop those on there. And then I'm going to just bring down just to show how to do these, this uh, garlic. So the one thing I was going to say was uh, Cyrus had told me uh, at one point that if I stick my tongue out and chop onions, <laughs> that, my, that I wouldn't cry anymore. And uh, I, was like, I was like, really? Does that really work? Um, I tried it a couple of times and it didn't necessarily work. <laughs> <laughs> That's too but funny. I did look super silly chopping yeah. my onions. <laughs> At least I got it. You got some good laughs, you know? I did. I got the good laugh. Yeah. For sure. Now, some people that I, I saw some comments coming and asking, you know, what, will the recipe be posted? Can we get the recipe? And the answer is yes. You go to masteringdiabetes.com slash holiday and you will be able to get a guide which has this recipe and several other amazing holiday recipes. It's free to go to masteringdiabetes.com slash holiday and you can download it. Nice. Now with minced garlic, I always, you know, people always have these gadgets that they use for minced garlic, but I just like to use my large chef knife and all you do for mincing it, and this is two cloves, is you just press and you kind of bring it towards yourself. So you're kind of smashing your garlic basically and there you have it and i usually just like to 
chop it up just a little bit more. And there we have it. So okay. this also goes into our butternut squash pot over here. Wendy, I want to tell you that Kimberly, Kimberly says, I just love Coach Wendy. I make her garbanzo bean mango cinnamon dish almost every day. I love, I love it. that. I love that. That is one of my favorite ones for sure. It's so tasty and so easy just to throw things together. So I've got butternut squash. I got onion. I got garlic. And now I have a half a cup of water. I'm going to put this right in the pan right here. I'm going to, sorry about that. <laughs> I'm going to put my lid right on top. And I'm going to put this on about a medium. Eh, I actually probably am going to put it on high heat. And I'm going to time it out. So I've got a little timer up here. I'm already seeing my microwave. I'm just going to do the timer for about five minutes. And that should be good enough. Perfect. And now we've got to finish cutting up some broccoli and some cauliflower. So I'm going to move my camera down so you can see my cutting board. So... I like to just do bite-sized pieces. And this little stem part, I will actually put in with everything. So you just cut this up. I love that you use the entire broccoli. Yeah, why waste it, right? Mm -hmm. You've got plenty of tasty broccoli and it cooks well. It'll give you just a little bit of a different texture, but it's gonna taste just the same. And it's super the nutritious. There's plenty of nutrients in there. Yes, absolutely. All right, so we got broccoli done. So I'm gonna put this over here in my other pan and I will move the camera so you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> Lots of camera moving today. There you go, perfect. <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna grab it with my hands, plop it in here. And now we're gonna do our cauliflower. So I'll do cauliflower real quick. And My you're cauliflower, I got using beautiful <laughs> cruciferous vegetables, Wendy. Yeah, these were lovely. And this is half of the cauliflower right here. So it's, it's really big, which is why I had to do it in batches so I could steam it all together. Mm -hmm. And I'm just getting rid of those little green pieces. I don't need to eat those with my meal. So these will all go in the compost pile over there. Okay. And then you just cut these up into bite-sized pieces. Really easy. Always good to have a sharp knife before you start cooking. I always recommend you actually sharpen your knife before you start chopping anything. Uh, nothing's worse than, you know, using a, a dull knife and then uh, perhaps possibly, you know, cutting yourself if you're not paying attention. So we've got this. It's a good reminder. It's <laughs> yeah. Very smart. To, I mean, I'm I'm sure. Like, listen in the chat box. All right, guys. Let's be honest. Write the letter S if you know you need to sharpen your knife. Right? <laughs> like, I think I I should be writing the letter the S. In, you, know, and you know what I mean? You know, and, and you know, once in a while, you can actually take your knives to a sharpener, somebody who actually will sharpen them for you, just to get you started with a good a good blade too. Okay, yeah. so we got our cauliflower all chopped up here. I'm also going to stick this over here in our nice little steamer yeah. and we'll get that going. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I like all the S's I'm seeing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Leah asks, how about tofu instead of cashews? You know, you could use that if you want, you know, in the mastering diabetes method, we typically see tofu is, you know, it's more processed. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, you absolutely can use it. You don't really use very much, so it would be okay. But just be mindful of how much of the recipe you're going to eat. You don't want to eat the whole recipe then, you know? Absolutely. Totally. Okay. So we got this steaming away. We've got our, our uh, butternut squash started. And now we get to make parts of the cheese sauce. Once, once, and once our butternut squash is done, then we can finish uh -huh. that. So... I'm going to move us so you can. But Wendy, you know, something you just said is like, but you're like, but you wouldn't want to eat all the recipe. The fact that you even have the mindset of like, you know what? I just might eat the whole thing. You know what I mean? Like, I just think that's so fun because that's the way this lifestyle works. When you're making these, these meals of basically what you're putting together is nothing but green light ingredients. And your mindset's like, you know what? I could just eat the whole recipe. I'll eat as much as well. I'm hungry till I'm satisfied. And that's a great 
way to feel about our food. Yes. And it's so funny because I was reading a magazine the other day that had, you know, they always have holiday recipes in them. And I found one for a salad that actually was mastering diabetes compliant. And I was looking at like how many servings it was and it was eight servings. I was looking at it like, well, I would eat the whole thing. (laughs) (laughs) That would be like a meal. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, that's great. I love that. All right. So I got the trusty old Vitamix here. And just while we're waiting for the butternut squash to finish, I'll start putting some of the ingredients in here so that I can pre-blend them and then stick the butternut squash and the onions and the garlic in here. So the first one I've got, I've got a half a cup of nutritional yeast. I pre-measured it out. Um, Super tasty and oftentimes recipes that want to kind of have like a, a cheese flavor actually use nutritional yeast. So we'll just pop that in there. Here's where I'm going to use, and it's such a small amount. <laughs> you can see I got some great northern beans here. Somebody said, what about beans. cannellini beans? Isn't that the same? Yeah, yeah. Any white bean will work just fine. Yeah. Any white bean. So I got a measure of eighth of a cup, and that's it. So I've got some extra beans for lunch later, which will be good. Now, you heard my timer go off. So that means it's time to take a look at this butternut squash over here. And I'll just bring it up to the camera. I think we are, I mean, I'm better off if I use a fork to, to check for done this here. So we'll just get a fork. Come on. Over. Perfect. Adrian wants to know if an immersion blender would work in lieu of a Vitamix. Uh, it would be harder to use. You would need like the pan I'm using. So this isn't quite done yet. So I'll, I'll wait a couple more minutes. Um, I want that butternut squash to be soft. I want to be able to put my fork right into it and not have it be hard. Um, So your question was the immersion blender. It would be a little bit more difficult. Like you couldn't use a flat pan like what I'm using. You would need to use more of a pot. Um, And yeah, you probably could do it, but you would would need a smaller area. And you just kind of have to test it out to see how it works. Right. Okay, so for the rest of our sauce here, we've got uh, got some paprika here. So a quarter t- teaspoon of paprika, I'm gonna stick here in the blender. And then um, this recipe uses sea salt. I actually have, um, it's called diamond crystal salt. It's supposed to have less sodium in it actually, so it's not gonna be super salty. Uh, so I'm just gonna do a half of a teaspoon Okay. We have a great, a great question. Somebody says if they can't, if they're allergic to nutritional yeast or unable to eat it for whatever reason, is there a good substitute that could help somebody achieve a cheesy flavor? Oh gosh, that is a difficult one. (laughs) I mean, you could try it without and just see if you like the flavor of it. You know, maybe you end up using some different spices to see Mm. like, okay, you know, maybe you like more pep, like this one has paprika in it. Maybe you use some onion powder, garlic powder, do a combination and see if, if you if that kind of helps a little bit. Because oftentimes when people are craving cheese, it's usually that salt flavor that they're craving a lot of times. Good point. You know, I mean, it's not only the texture, obviously, but it's that salt flavor. And so if you can get some garlic powder, onion powder in there, you're, that way you decrease the salt a little bit. You could still use that half teaspoon in there because it's, you know, the idea is that you're not going to eat this whole recipe, but maybe it will. This one's for four <laughs> servings. <laughs> oh, and I forgot, you're supposed to preheat your oven, so I better go do that right now. So uh-huh. 375 is where you want your onion, your uh, onion, your oven at. And I've got a ball oven, so I'm going to turn it on over here. Perfect. Um, Somebody made a suggestion, uh, you smoked paprika and coconut aminos could be a oh, replacement. Yes. Interesting. Okay. Yes, that's a good combination for sure. And I love smoked paprika. Do you mm-hmm. like it, Robbie? Uh, absolutely. It's a great, great, uh, flavor agent. Yeah. Um, now we also have another question that came in. What about using plant-based cheese? So, you know, you work with like, well, the one thing I want to emphasize for everybody here is like, if you wanted for coach Wendy to be your coach, you could do that. Um, but I love these questions that are coming in and these are the types of questions as a coach that you walk people through on a day-to-day basis, especially when they're in the private coaching with you, they text you, like they figure this out, like, what do you do to make this stuff work for you? And there's a lot of additional questions, but we have we have thoughts about plant-based cheese here at Mastering Diabetes. So maybe you could share how you work with clients who are thinking about that 
We do. So I just had to put a little bit more water in there. It's getting super close to being done, but not quite yet. So that, uh, you know, the, the cheeses that they make for people that are vegan actually contain a lot of oil in them. And so the fat content is super high. And if we think about oil, you know, oil is actually going to cause insulin resistance. Mm -hmm. When we take in, you know, if you're somebody who takes insulin, your insulin's not going to work for like hours if you eat something like that. Um, if you have type two, you're going to find blood glucose might look great at hour two, but hour three or four afterwards or before the next meal, you're going to find an elevation and wonder like what happened here? Or if you have prediabetes and you're checking your blood glucose, you're also going to have that same experience. And so we find it's just too high in fat and, and we consider it, we have a traffic light list here. Uh, we consider it a red light item. So it's an item and red light all it stands for, which I love, is just that it's going to cause more insulin resistance. It does not mean you're bad for eating it, that we should shame you, that you're horrible. <laughs> it doesn't mean that at all. It just means this is what you can, we predict is going to happen to your blood glucose. That's so right. I don't recommend those. And I love that you made that point, Wendy, because we're not the food police here. We're just teaching you, hey, look, these are going to be the consequences. And you're going to decide what consequences do you want to deal with or not deal with. That's up to you. Yeah. Um, now I don't want to halt you from making the recipe, so I'll, I'll let you continue. But somebody did say, look, I got here late. Is the recipe somewhere? Yes. The recipe is at masteringdiabetes.org slash holiday. Um, Michael, if you could maybe put the link in the chat box as well. Um, so basically you're going to go there, you're going to download this guide and this guide is going to have this amazing recipe and a lot of other great ones. Okay. So that's how you're going to get the recipe. Okay. Continue Wendy. All right, so I've got my initial ingredients in here, right? I got the nutritional yeast, I got the salt, I got the paprika, and I got the eighth cup of, of the white beans, which I got great northern beans. And so you're supposed to blend this up before you actually put your um, butternut squash in here. So I'm going to blend real quick. It might be allowed for a second. <laughs> so pardon me. <laughs> we got this. Part of being in the kitchen with Wendy. <laughs> Actually, the producer muted you, so we're, we're chill on that. So don't you worry. Um, let's see. Yes, masteringdiabetes.org slash holiday. Okay, you're going to get this guide for free with a bunch of other holiday recipes. Yes. And like Wendy said in the beginning, this recipe actually pleased people who aren't even necessarily plant-based eaters. So that's a good sign. Yes. And yeah. And the, and the guide, it's beautiful. It's so pretty. I always love like when I see a recipe of how, how beautiful everything looks, you know, it's more exciting to try the recipes out if it, if it looks good on Absolutely. paper, right? I agree. Couldn't agree more. All right. Let me check this out and see where we're at. Oh yeah, we are, we are ready to go. So I'm going to put on an easier glove for me to deal with. <laughs> okay, good. And this is all going to go inside of this Vitamix right here. Okay. So, let's see. We're going to do... While you do that, I'll answer. So, I think the a question was on the screen. I'm a little confused about what somebody was asking. But if you're trying to gain weight and you're having blood glucose issues, um, you might be misdiagnosed. That's something to look into. Um, it, that would be, it's pretty rare that somebody is actually underweight and has some form of non-autoimmune version of diabetes. Uh, so in that case, definitely, you know, you can either email our team and, um, you know, we're going to work with a coach, but getting your CPAP side tested and finding out what type of diabetes you're living with is very important. Judah says, I was just doing the recipe today. Um, I'm trying this recipe today. I love that Judith. Fantastic. Okay. Continue. All right. Yeah, smoke. I love it. Here we are. I know it's hot and it's, it's great. Like the fork went right through that butternut squash. Mm -hmm. So it's perfect. It's mm -hmm. right right where it needs to be. So now what we do is we blend it together. Now we might need a little bit of water. So I've got my little water over here on standby, just in case. Um, I need just a little bit, but I'm going to start with my blender. So you may want to mute me. Okay, okay. perfect. <laughs> All right. Um, there's some questions in the chat. That's question box. Um, we'll have Wendy answer the difference between Great Northern and Cannellini beans. So she'll, she'll be able to tell you all that. Can you use frozen veggies for this? Absolutely. You can use frozen veggies. 
you would just still follow the recipes just like Wendy Wendy's doing on the screen here. Can any substitute for the paprika, onions, and garlic? You could just omit them or use other spices. Again, tr any recipe can be tweaked to your preferences. You know, it, it could sound weird to other people, but you're like, no, I, I love this. I love this spice. I love this ingredient. I can put it into anything. And you can try it. Just do whatever you got to do. Okay. All right. Wendy's back. I am back. And, you know, I always have to try it and see if it tastes any good. Absolutely. Let's see. Mm. Oh, my gosh. It looks good. That color is great, Wendy. It's so, the color is fantastic. It's awesome. It tastes so good. <laughs> I like it just like this. Like this, just this part of the recipe would be really nice for just a cheese sauce. Yeah. You know, if we're going to put it on something for sure. Okay. So my next thing to do here is, let me grab my gloves. So I don't burn myself. Is I've been steaming the rest of the, the cauliflower and the broccoli over here. So I'm just going to come over here. And see how it's looking. It's looking pretty good. Stick that there. And I'm just going to dump this into my casserole dish I've got sitting right here. Boom. Just like that. Easy. Boom. Just like that. And I'll turn my oven on. Okay. We have a great question that came in. Is this recipe something that you could freeze and eat throughout the week? The, uh, this one? Yeah. Huh. I don't know how the freezing would be. It might. You, you might find it a little bit mushier, possibly, mm -hmm. but it probably would freeze just fine. Mm -hmm. You know, yep. I mean, it'd be similar to, you know, frozen. Well, let me think about if Have I frozen cooked broccoli? I don't know if I've frozen cooked broccoli. Have you ever frozen cooked broccoli? I, I've not tried that, but I have a feeling that people are going to like the recipe so much that they can't even get it to the freezer. You know? <laughs> I yeah. bet you you're right. I bet you you're right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I got this cheese sauce here, right? I'm just going to dump this right on top of everything, and then I'll mix it in. Beautiful. It is so pretty, and this tastes fabulous. I'm just going to wipe this off on the side. We'll get rid of this over here. And I got my spatula. I like to try to get out as much as I possibly can out of here. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Yeah, and it's... It's such a nice recipe because you can eat a lot of it. You know, if you think about, gosh, I'm going to go, you know, over to a friend's house for Thanksgiving or you're going to your relatives. This is a recipe that everybody can enjoy. You don't have to tell them that you put beans in it. If you decide to uh -huh. <laughs> put beans in the sauce, you can just say, I don't know. You know, I got this recipe and it's, um, you know, broccoli and cauliflower. See how you like it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just that simple. Yeah, that simple. And just say it's cheese. You don't have to. You don't have to divulge all the secrets. You know, most chefs don't divulge all of their secrets and their recipes. So that's, that's kind of true. how this works. That's true. <laughs> have a great question that came in. They want to know what are you going to eat for Thanksgiving, Wendy? Oh, that's a fantastic question. So every single year, there is actually a, a recipe on Forks Over Knives called uh, Vegan Polenta Shepherd's Pie. Uh -huh. And it's a recipe that my mom, who does not eat this way, requests every single year. Wow. And so so I have that recipe. Uh, it, it takes a while to make. It, it takes probably two hours to make. So it's not something you can do <laughs> last minute. Yeah. But, but I find, um, you know, when I find a recipe like that, and that's just a holiday recipe, it's just very special. Um, I will write down like, because I have to dose insulin, I will actually write down how I dose for it the year before so that I'll remember how to dose for it this year. And Brilliant. then I'm also going to make, um, I made a pumpkin pie. I made a mastering diabetes compliant pumpkin pie. So I'm making that this year too. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be my Thanksgiving. That's amazing. Diana says she can't wait to try this recipe right here. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Look at how yummy that looks. That's fantastic. Wait, wait, wait. That color is just sensational. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to pop this in the oven and it'll be in there for 40 minutes. Boom. But I do you have magic. Recipe. I've got magic. So hold You've on. You've got magic, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> People okay. love you so much. They want to know if you have an Instagram account. Oh, gosh. You know what? I do, but I don't even know what it is. <laughs> oh, you know what? I do know what it is. It's a... Uh, uh, 
Wendy EQS is my, is my Instagram. But no, I don't post things. The, the thing is, if you want to be in touch with Wendy, you should join the coaching program. You should. And, uh, yeah, because I'm not going to post anything on Instagram. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but you do recipes like this all the time in our members only Facebook group. Look at this. Yes, all the time. So I, right now, of course, I just got this out of the fridge and it's cold. But. Uh, oh, Sherry, thank you. <laughs> so here's here's my uh, uh, cheesy broccoli cauliflower casserole. Oh, there it is. Just like that. Mm. Yeah. Simple recipe that just looks wildly delicious. It's so good. It's mm. so good. And like I said, you could just make the sauce by itself mm -hmm. and use yeah. it as a dip if you wanted to. Absolutely. Let's say you didn't want to steam your broccoli or cauliflower and you wanted to have kind of a dip for, for raw cauliflower and broccoli, you could use it like that. How long would that sauce last in the fridge? Mm, probably about three days. Okay, three days, perfect. All right, yeah. um, another question is, can you recommend an SOS free bouillon? SOS free. Bouillon. Like a, what? I, love <laughs> I don't know what SOS free means. Salt, oil, sugar. Oh, oh, huh. I mean, I don't use bouillon typically, uh -huh. Uh -huh. you know, I'll either make my own veggie broth or yeah. I find a low sodium one. That yeah, I use. easy. I like that. That's the best answer. You just make it at home. All right. Yeah. Where can people buy coconut aminos? Oh, you can get it everywhere. You can get it at Trader Joe's. You can get it at a regular Amazon. market. Yeah. Amazon has it. Yeah. Easy. Okay. Yeah. What's the difference between great Northern beans and cannellini beans? Oh, Cannellini beans actually are um, a, like a sister bean to red kidney beans, mm -hmm. actually. Cannellini beans, I often think of as, you know, they would work well in this recipe as well. I just wanted a white bean, um, and this is what I had access to at the time. But, but yeah, cannellini, same as a red kidney bean, but it's white, mm -hmm. um, whereas great northern bean, just another white bean. And I just look at, I look for, are they low fat, zero fat? That, that's really what I'm looking yeah, for. Yeah, hundred percent. Another great question about the sauce. Could you freeze this sauce? Oh, yeah, you probably could. I mean, you know, think of the ingredients. It's just butternut squash with onion and garlic. Um, mm -hmm. And then you've got your spices in there. So absolutely, you could freeze it. Yeah, okay. Very I don't know. Good. You know, you would have to see like, what's the texture look like after freezing? That's always, that's the one thing I don't know because I haven't frozen it myself because yeah. I'm going to eat it all. <laughs> you know, I think, I think the viewers should try. I think the best thing you can do is try and find out. There's one way to find out. Okay. Yeah. I can freeze the sauce in portions to add to fresh steam veggies, right? Yeah. I mean, try, I think Adrian, try it. Like it's always worth a shot. Um, yeah. Some people might not like the text. Some other people might not like the texture or something that happens when it's frozen, but you might be okay with it. It might add so much convenience that you're going to be like, you know what? I'm going to keep doing this. So you do that. All right. So if you haven't gotten your holiday guide yet, go to masteringdiabetes.com slash holiday. You're going to download it. It's free. Uh, it's beautiful, full of so many great recipes. And, you know, actually what I want to do is I want everybody here to see the holiday guide. So let oh, me. Oh yeah, you should share it. It's so pretty. Make that happen. Here we go. All right. So yeah, there's our recipe from today. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Okay, people can see it now. Yeah. Look at that. I love it. Oh yeah, see, look at that. Oh wow, I love how this is going so fast. Brilliant. Okay, these are all the amazing uh, recipes you can get for free when you go to masteringdiabetes.org/holiday. It's our gift to you guys to have this holiday guide so you can be prepared and ready. And this is not just for Thanksgiving. I mean, you can use this for Christmas. You can use this for New Year's. You can use this year round, right? Yes. It's our gift to you guys. It's free. So take advantage of it. Wendy, I want to say thank you so much for coming here today and showing us the recipe and just leading by example. Uh, you're living with type 1 diabetes. You, you, know, you manage your blood glucose day in, day out. You talk to us how you tweak this recipe. You have the beans. So your blood glucose is flat. Like... You're an amazing example. You and our coaching team, you don't ask people to do anything that you're not doing yourselves. And Absolutely. I think that's powerful. And I, I really, I love that. So um, thanks for everything we do. I guess we'll answer this last question. Can you repeat the forks over knives recipe? Why don't we tell people that? Oh, yes. Okay. Forks over knives recipe. It starts with vegan is the first word. Polenta shepherd's pie. Okay. Let me, I'm a vegan. Polenta. I'm going to pull it up real quick. Great. 
Um, it's an adult recipe for sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> see if I got the right one. Uh, I have to go here. And if I uh, share my screen, share screen, share screen, boom. Okay, can you see this? Is this it? Uh, yeah, that is the, uh, well, you know what? Mine has a different name to it, but that's, it, it looks like the same recipe to me. Maybe, yeah. they the name. Maybe they changed the name. Yeah. Okay. So you just Google vegan shepherd's pie with polenta, lentils, forks over knives, and you'll find it. No yeah, problem. That's the same recipe. That is the yeah. same recipe. Yeah. Okay. So I got to figure out how to stop sharing my screen now. <laughs> uh, oh, here we go. I figured it out. Okay. Oh, there you go. That was all fun. right. That was fun. Well, Wendy, we could be here all day. Um, I want to say thank you for everybody showing up for um, putting in the effort to take care of yourself. Lead by example. We want this holiday season to be a success for you. Grab the holiday guide and we will see you next week. Same time, same place. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Robbie. Bye, Have Wendy. See ya. see ya. Bye.